strong today? And because it's the backbone of a decent, respectable life. Hmm. Trouble with her is she likes a drop. I've smelled it on her before today. Sometimes if merinos are down and staying down, then your crossbreds will have to follow. I've cooked and cleaned and mended and washed for you. I've pinched and scrimped and saved for Just you. Just a minute, Joe. Yeah, we must. That isn't all, is it? What, what is this? No, Herbert. And don't it's call me Herbert. No, I said, nay, yeah, Edith, have a bit of mercy on your inside. But of course she just laughed. Oh, the doctor said, you're full of acid, Mrs. Poster, that's your trouble. You're so this was when they were married then? <laughs> September the 5th, 83? Yes. <laughs> so you're going to have to be very careful what you say to them. They're going to be awfully cross with you. And that beastly Councillor Parker's here too. You look to me about 70. 70? I, I, I'm 54. Is it essential that you should know everything about my private affairs? Go on, you might as well tell me. I've got a lost our photographer, Henry Orman, right? I brought him with me here earlier on, and then we went back to the line where we met an old pal, and I left him singing his larboard watch in the tap room not 20 minutes since, and, and then I went into the private bar five minutes afterwards, couldn't find out yet. Madam, a working man I know called Northrop stopped me in the street and told me to come at once to Alderman Halliwell's house, as a clergyman's presence was urgently required here. So here I am, entirely at your service. I suddenly find out he isn't married already after all. Well, you can't blame me, can you? If I'd like to know if he's in the same mind. There's three of them here tonight, you see. All big men at chapel. You've been enjoying yourself a bit too much, I fancy, lad.